Hey, everyone. Do you know what's up? I know what's up. After finally, finally, finally beating Sekiro Shadows Die twice, we really wanted to talk about how FromSoft is not only challenging players, but challenging themselves as they continue to somehow capture lightning in a bottle multiple times. But let's get one thing straight. When game journalists latch on to the latest FromSoft game and all echo chamber the idea that insert game here is harder than ever, it's usually met with a collective sigh of the gaming community. And this may of course have been fueled by FromSoft's previous marketing ventures, especially with Namco Bandai. I mean, the first Dark Souls had a tagline, now famously memed to death, no pun intended, prepare to die. While it kind of got out of hand in the later years of the Soulsborne series, we are now experiencing a period post this is the Dark Souls of X genre in the gaming industry, at least from what I've seen. So let's get right into that. Now to understand what Sekiro has really done and how it has shaken up the current gaming landscape, we need to go back to FromSoft's roots to understand their ideology and their recent shift on the same ideology. Well, maybe not shift, but perhaps evolution? Those of you who have been around for a while probably can already guess what I'm going to talk about. See, way back during 1994, during the years of the first PlayStation console, a little game development team known as From Software created a game called Kingsfield. But what about Kingsfield? Have you even heard of Kingsfield? Well, imagine a simplified Dark Souls with pre-Minecraft graphics and a brutal, unyielding difficulty curve. That's Kingsfield, at least how it looks. In fact, it would go on to spawn three more sequels all the way until 2001. FromSoft has always kept a few key points in mind when developing a game, or what we end up seeing in their games anyhow. Level design with its sprawling and interconnected pseudo dungeons, enemy design where you need to be aware of your opponent's strengths and weaknesses even more so than your own, and of course, soul-crushing, but fair, difficulty. FromSoft really hit their stride with the next title, not including the Armored Core series, that elevated them into the mainstream, and even then, this game was still considered a cult classic. That game being Demon Souls, a dark fantasy action RPG exclusively developed for the PlayStation 3. This would be people's first taste of the Soulsborne formula, and while it wasn't the big time blockbuster of its successors, it would be the first big success done by FromSoft in this budding subgenre of RPGs. Demon Souls set the stage for all future games in the Soulsborne series. It had stat leveling, deliberate and melodic combat with a ton of variety in weapon movesets, and a dark brooding atmosphere that touted the lines of helplessness and loss. See where I'm going with this? It's true that every interaction of the Soulsborne series had something unique that fundamentally changed the formula, but it often felt experimental. And in hindsight, things that worked and things that didn't work may not have even ended up in the following game in any form or fashion. It's as if FromSoft kept wanting to push the boundaries of their games, but weren't sure if it was going to stick, and while I embraced most changes, not everyone was so accepting. Controversial changes have been made, what with bonfires and Estus flash charges in the first Dark Souls, to the discarding of blocking and rewarding of a more aggressive playstyle seen in Bloodborne. And don't even get me started on poise. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Moving on. But the thing about these changes weren't that they were bad for the respective game exactly, it's that each significant alteration to the formula challenged what it meant to be a Soulsborne game. So what does FromSoft hold sacred? Is nothing free from the chopping block in favor of more experimentation? Well, kiddo, that's where Sekiro comes in to forcefully shove a katana right through the back of your favorite Soulsborne experiences. Okay, but what did Sekiro do that makes it so compelling and create such a contrast to the previous FromSoft titles? Well, for starters, and probably most surprising, there's no multiplayer. That means no invasions, no jolly cooperation, and worse, no trolling, which of course directly means no hate mail. People who used a scraping spear and acid cloud back in the Demon Souls days know what I'm talking about. You awful, detestable, beautiful human beings. There's also no weapon and armor loot. Like, you don't get to use and wear what you defeat. Sorry, no double tower shields for you. And the change bigger than all the others, bigger than the adjudicator demon giving Smo the hardiest of bear hugs, is the combat. But not to worry people, not all is lost, because with FromSoft, when something is taken away, something else is given. Whether or not it's immediately apparent is left up to the players, and that's the thing I think Sekiro really excels at, giving the player tools 
and more importantly, options in how they approach challenges. In Sekiro, combat is not a, quote, you go, then I go, then you go kind of affair. You still are looking for openings, but not as much as making them yourself. If Soulsborne combat is like chess, then Sekiro combat is like a spicy salsa. The uh, dance, not the sauce. Or maybe the sauce, but it's the spiciest salsa ever. In both ways, there are many steps taken in an intense session of dancing. Both partners have to manage an ebb and a flow to where they position their feet, how they carry their momentum, and so forth. Shakira, Sekiro. Since you don't have a shield in Sekiro, traditionally, and blocking is extremely finite, you have to dance with and around your opponent through intense sword fighting segments that is directly and deliberately dictated by how you and the enemy react to each other. You can't just turtle and wait for something good to happen, you have to make it happen. Uh, borderline life advice from a video game about zombie ninjas. At least that's what I got while watching Doza play through this beautiful game. So where do we go from here? With FromSoft coming out and saying that Dark Souls 3 was the last of the Souls series specifically, what will become of Sekiro? Perhaps DLC will be in order, in the future, or maybe even a sequel, though I have my doubts on that one. FromSoft has a tendency of doing at least one expansion of some sort, and Activision is involved this time, which by the way, can we all breathe a collective sigh of relief that they aren't selling XP boosts or crafting materials in Sekiro for money? Because they sure as heck could have. Looking at you, Dead Space 3, Mavis rule RIP and pepperonis in peace. Of course, I'm not holding my breath after the disaster that was gaming in 2018, where nothing was sacred and nothing was off the table, folks. But let's try to keep optimistic here. I think FromSoft, though not perfect, has a pretty good track record. What do you guys think the future holds? We're definitely holding out for more FromSoft punishment. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by doing the things. And if you're new, thanks for being here. It really means a lot. By the way, if you don't know, we stream every Monday through Thursday from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're so inclined, come join us for some good times and great conversations. We, we love y'all.